الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد قد وصلنا إلى قول المؤلف رحمه الله قوله فإن صاموا بشهادة واحد ليس كذلك يقول الحجاوي رحمه الله فإن صاموا بشهادة واحد ثلاثين يوما فلم يرى الهلال أو صاموا لأجل غيم لم يفطروا فإن صاموا بشهادة واحد ثلاثين يوما فلم يرى الهلال أو صاموا لأجل غيم لم يفطروا الحجاوي رحمه الله says there at the top of the page and if they fast due to the testimony of one person 30 days and then the hilal is not seen or they fasted due to cloudiness they do not break their fast understood understood and if they fast due to the testimony of one person 30 days Someone testified that they saw the hilal. People began fasting. They fasted 30 days. And then the hilal is not seen. Or they fasted due to cloudiness. Because the Hanabila say what? What do we say? Naam, that it's an obligation to fast. Or they fasted due to cloudiness. They do not break their fast. Meaning for uh, the month of Shawwal. Yaqulu rahimahullah. قوله فإن صاموا بشهادة واحد ثلاثين يوما فلم يرى الهلال أو صاموا لأجل غيم لم يفطروا إن صاموا أي الناس بشهادة واحد أي في دخول شهر رمضان ولم يروا هلال شوال فإنهم لا يفطرون فيصومون واحدا وثلاثين يوما لماذا؟ لأنه لا يثبت خروج الشهر إلا بشهادة رجلين وهنا الصوم مبني على شهادة رجل فهو مبني على سبب لا يثبت به خروج الشهر فهو مبني على سبب لا يثبت به خروج الشهر ما الذي يثبت به خروج الشهر ما الذي يثبت به خروج الشهر شهادة شاهدين خروج الشهر بشهادة شاهدين بخلاف ثبوت دخول شهر رمضان فإنه يثبت بشهادة واحد فإذا ثبت دخول الشهر وهذا معنى كلام الحجاوي يقول فإذا ثبت دخول الشهر بشهادة واحد فصاموا ثلاثين يوما ولم يرى الهلال أي هلال شوال ولم يرى الهلال لم يفطروا لماذا؟ لماذا لا يفطرون؟ لأنهم لو أفطروا لكانوا قد بنوا فطرهم على شهادة الواحد وشهادة الواحد لا يثبت بها خروج شهر رمضان والأصل بقاء الشهر يقول الشيخ فلو أفطروا لكانوا قد بنوا على شهادة واحد وهذا لا يكون في الفطر وهذا هو المشهور من المذهب أي مذهب الحنابلة He says رحمه الله If they fast meaning the people It's explaining the words of Al-Hajjawi If they fast meaning the people Due to the testimony of one person Meaning in that Ramadan has entered Okay, and they did not see the hilal of Shawwal. So one person, we began fasting due to the testimony of one person. They fasted 30 days, and then the hilal of Shawwal was not seen. Then they do not break their fast. And so then they end up fasting huh? 31 days. So you'll be fasting 31 days. Why? Why did they say that? Because they said that the month exiting cannot be can only be based on the testimony of two people. So if we began fasting 
due to the testimony of one person, and then we completed the 30 days and say we have to break our fast, it's as if we broke our fast because of that testimony of one person. So they said, if they break their fast in this case, they would be basing it on the testimony of one person, that initial testimony, and that's not possible in Al-Fitr. That's not possible for Al-Fitr in establishing the month of Shawwal, and this is what is popular of the madhab. This is the prominent position of the madhab. Of who? Hanabina. So then, how then? How is the month established? How is the uh, month exiting established? Meaning, we say Ramadan is finished. Shawwal has entered due to the testimony of two people. Must be two people, as opposed to the. Beginning of Ramadan, establishing that Ramadan has entered, it's based on the testimony of one. And so if we, if we establish that the month has entered according to the testimony of one person, and so they fast 30 days, and then they don't see the Hilal, they say, they say, do not break your fast. Why don't you break your fast in this case? No. No. You guys didn't get it. Naam. They said because you would be basing your uh, fitr on one testimony. Who? Where is that one testimony? In the beginning of the month. And they said that the end of the month, meaning shawwal entering, is only established through the testimony of two people. And so the basis is that we stay on what we are in. We stay in whatever we're upon, and that is that Ramadan remains. He's, as, so this is what he said, the sheikh said, this is the prominent position of the madhab. يقول, وَقَالَ بَعْضُ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ بَلْ إِذَا صَامُوا ثَلَاثِينَ يَوْمًا بِشَهَادَةِ وَاحِدٍ لَزِمَهُمُ الْفِطْرِ لأن الفطرة تابع للصوم ومبني عليه والصوم ثبت بدليل شرعي وقد صاموا ثلاثين يوما ولا يمكن أن يزيد الشهر على ثلاثين يوما أو يقال يلزمهم الفطر تبعا للصوم لأنه يثبت تبعا ما لا يثبت استقلالا وهذا القول هو الصحيح يقول الشيخ وهذا القول هو الصحيح وهو قول الشافعية وهو قول الشافعية وهو أنه إذا صام الناس ثلاثين يوما فإنهم يفطرون مطلقا ولو كان دخول الشهر برؤية واحد. He says and some of the people of knowledge said no if they fast thirty days due to the testimony of one person then they must break their fast. They fasted 30 days, that's it. Why? Because breaking the fast follows fasting. And fasting has been established with a legislative evidence, and they have fasted 30 days, and the month can't be more than 30 days. Or that they break their fast because that it follows the fasting. You fasted 30 days, you're done. لأنه يثبت تبعا ما لا يثبت استقلالا because rulings may be established subsequently even though those rulings may not be established individually What's I, what did I just say? rulings may be established some, subsequently even though those rulings may, may not be established individually what does that mean? This is one of the principles of fiqh, as they say. And to give an example, what's the ruling, for example, on eating insects? Haram. Not allowed to eat it. Do you like cashews? Sometimes, if you open some cashews, you find insects in it. Small ones, right? Is it, because it's haram now big to eat insects, is it an obligation to open every one to make sure there's no insects and eat it? 
No. In fact, if you eat, you probably eat, you probably ate some. You probably ate some. But is it haram in that case? No, because rulings may be established subsequently, even though they may not be established individually. So individually, we say, no, that's not permissible. But because it's following something else, then it takes a different ruling. And they, there's many, many examples for this. And you guys should know this. This is uh, yani, a basic principle of uh, fiqh. He says, and this is the correct position. That what? That's it. That if 30 days are fasted, then the fast is broken. And this is the opinion of the Shafi'iyya. This is the opinion of the Shafi'iyya. And that is that if the people fast 30 days, then they break their fast unconditionally. They break their fast even if the beginning of the month, we establish the beginning of the month due to the testimony of one person. 30 days are fasted, then the people break their fast. And this is the correct position. Of whom? وقوله يقول رحمه الله وقوله أو صاموا لأجل غيم لم يفطروا إذا صاموا لأجل غيم فإنهم لا يفطرون لأن صيامهم في أول الشهر ليس مبنيا على بينة وإنما هو احتياط وعلى القول الصحيح لأن الشيخ رجح أنه لا يجوز صيام صيام يوم الشك وعلى القول الصحيح لا ترد هذه المسألة لأنه لن يصام لأجل الغيم فهذه المسألة إنما ترد على قول من, يلز من يلزمهم بالصيام لأجل الغيم وهو قول الحنابلة وقد تقدم بيانه and his statement and his statement or they fasted due to cloudiness they do not break their fast the Sheikh says, if they fasted due to cloudiness, meaning the beginning of the month, remember, if it's cloudy, the Hanabila say what? Then people bring, begin their fast. So they said in that case as well, and they fasted 30 days, then they should not, they should not break their fast. Why? Because they said the beginning of the month was established. It wasn't established on a clear proof. But it was established on precaution. Remember we said, they said we should fast what? As a precautionary measure. In case we should fast. So similarly, if 30 days pass, then we should not break our fast if that's how we establish the month. What do you think? He says, and according to the correct position, then this issue doesn't even apply. This issue doesn't apply. Why doesn't it apply? No. Because, remember, the we said that it's not an obligation to fast that day. It's not an obligation to fast that day. And the Shaykh, remember, he said that it's actually haram to fast the day of doubt. And so, the people shouldn't even be fasting due to cloudiness in the first place. He says, and this... Issue only applies to the ones who say that it, people must fast due to cloudiness. And that's the position of who? Hanabila. And we clarified that previously. يقول رحمه الله تنبيه كل الأشياء المعلقة بدخول شهر رمضان لا تحل في ليلة الثلاثين من شعبان إذا كان غيم أو قتر وإنما يجب الصوم فقط لأن الشهر لم يثبت دخوله شرعا وإنما صمنا احتياطا أي على قول حنابلة وإنما صمنا احتياطا مثال ذلك لو قال رجل لزوجته إذا دخل رمضان فأنت طالق فإنه لا يقع الطلاق بتلك الليلة لماذا؟ لأنه لم يثبت دخول الشهر شرعا وكذا الديون المؤجلة إلى دخول شهر رمضان فإنها لا تحل بتلك الليلة يعني لو قال لك متى أرد لك هذا الدين قال رده في أول رمضان وكذا المعتد بالأشهر إذا كانت عدتها تنتهي بتمام شعبان فإنها لا تنتهي بتلك الليلة لماذا؟ لأن الشهر 
لم يثبت دخوله شرعا He points out something he says everything which is attached to the month of Ramadan entering then it does not take place at the 30th night of Sha'ban if there is cloudiness or dust and it's only an obligation to fast because why this issue because the month hasn't been established legislatively it's an obligation to fast according to who Hanabila and we are only fasting as a precautionary measure for example if someone says to his wife you are طالق as soon as Ramadan begins right these are issues then important issues then she does not she is not divorced on that night that 30th night of Sha'ban why because the month hasn't been established shar'an and also for example if so if you gave someone a, a debt uh, gave someone a loan so he has debt and you tell him when do I have to pay he said when do I have to pay you back he says pay me back on the first of Ramadan that's the time so does that so at that point the 30th of, of Sha'ban that night where it's cloudy or dusty is that when he has to pay you back no even though they say we should begin fasting the Hanabila and also the woman in her waiting period if her waiting period ends with the come with Sha, with uh, Sha'ban finishing then the same issue as well all of this why because the month hasn't been established shar'an mas'ala hadi mas'ala muhimma qala mas'ala law sama bi ru'yati balad thumma safara li balad akhar qad samu ba'dahum bi yawm wa atamma huwa 30 yawman wa lam yura al hilal fi tilka al balad allati safara ilayha فَهَلْ يُفْطِرُ أَوْ يَصُومُ مَعَهُمْ Here's an issue. وَهَذِهِ الْمَسْأَلَةَ تَقَعُ كَثِيرًا فِي هَذَا الزَّمَنْ لِسُهُولَةَ الْإِنْتِقَالِ وَالسَّفَرِ مِنْ بَلَدٍ إِلَى بَلَدٍ Issue. Now if someone begins fasting due to the sighting of one country, the country that he's in, and then he travels to a country that has fasted a day later, and then he has completed, he completed his 30 days. And the hilal isn't seen in the country that he traveled to. So does he break his fast or does he continue fasting with them? Understood? What the issue is? It's very common in this time. يَقُولُ الشَّيْخِ الصحيح الصحيح إذن المسألة فيها خلاف الصحيح أنه يصوم معهم ولو صام واحدا وثلاثين يوما وربما يقاس ذلك على ما على ما على ما لو سافر إلى بلد يتأخر غروب الشمس فيه فإنه يفطر حسب غروب الشمس في تلك البلد التي سافر إليها. He says the correct position when they say that and the correct position is what does that mean? There's difference of opinion. He says the correct position is that he fasts with them. You go to a country, and then the country that you were initially in has seen the Hilal of Shawwal. And so, they're having Eid. But the country that you're in now has one more day, for example. So what do you do? You're, you, he's saying, the correct position is that you fast with them. Even if he fasts 31 days. And he says, we, it's possible to compare this to, for example, someone who travels to a country and sunset is later than sunset in the country he was in. What does he do? Does he say, because I was in that country, I'm going to break my fast at that time? He takes the rulings of the country that he's in. He says, so we can compare that to this, for example. وَقِيلَ وَهُوَ الْمَذْهَبْ إِنَّهُ يُفْطِرُ سِرًّا they, he said, and it is said, and it is the madhab that he should break his fast secretly. He should break his fast secretly. You go to a country, and they still fasting, but in the original country, they declare that it's Eid. 
So they say, uh, break your fast secretly. Why? Huh? Remember that the Hanabila say that if a sighting is seen in one country, that applies to all countries. So they said that because it's been seen, now. What's Sahih? أَنَّهُ لَهُ حُكْمُ الْبَلَدِ الَّذِي سَافَرَ إِلَيْهَا The correct position is that you take the ruling of the country that you've traveled to. The country that now you're in, that's the rulings you take. طيب, الشيخ رحمه الله مثل بمن سافر إلى بلد صام أهلها بعده بيوم. سكذلك. لكن لو سافر إلى بلد صام أهلها قبله بيوم وأفطروا بعد صيام تسعة وعشرين يوما أي ثبت شوال عندهم وهو بينهم فيكون إذا أفطر معهم كان قد صام كم ثمانية وعشرين يوما فهل يفطر معهم the Sheikh Rahimahullah gave the example of someone who travels to a country who began fasting a day later. Right? Let's say you travel to a country that began fasting a day earlier. And they broke their fast after 29 days. Okay? And so if you, they saw... The Hilal of Shawwal. And so if you break your fast with them, then you would have fasted 28 days. Do you break your fast with them or not? This is a common issue this time too. نعم, يفطر معهم. يفطر معهم. وإذا كان قد صام أقل من تسعة وعشرين فإنه يقضي ما نقصه. يقضي ما نقصه. So, Naam, he breaks his fast with them. However, however, he breaks his fast with them. However, if he had fasted less than 29 days, then he has to make up that day. Understood? So in this case, he fasted 28, he has to make up a day. Huh? Yeah, yeah, after. So he makes up the day after. Understood? Tayyip. يقول الحجاوي رحمه الله ومن رأى وحده هلال رمضان ورد قوله أو رأى هلال شوال صام حج الحجاوي رحمه الله says and whoever sees the hilal of Ramadan alone and his testimony is rejected or sees the Hilal of Shawwal, fasts. And whoever sees the Hilal of Ramadan alone, and his testimony is rejected, or sees the Hilal of Shawwal, meaning alone, fasts. Meaning he fasts in both cases. قوله, يقول الشيخ, قوله, ومن رأى وحده Hilal Ramadan, ورد قوله, أو رأى Hilal Shawwal, صام, وحده أي منفردا عن الناس سواء كان منفردا بمكان أو منفردا برؤية مثال ما إذا كان منفردا بمكان إذا كان الإنسان في برية ليس معه أحد فرأى الهلال وذهب إلى القاضي فرد قوله إما لجهالته بحاله أو لأي سبب من الأسباب ومثال الانفراد بالرؤية أن يجتمع معه الناس لرؤية الهلال فيراه هو ولا يراه غيره لكن رد قوله فيلزمه الصوم فيلزمه الصوم لقوله تعالى فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ولقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم صوموا لرؤيته وأفطروا لرؤيته وهذا الرجل رآه فوجب عليه الصوم وكل ما يترتب على دخول الشهر لأنه رآه أي رأى هلال رمضان وحده ورد قوله هل يصوم أو لا يصوم 
قول الجمهور جمهور العلماء يقولون يلزمه الصوم لأنه رأى الهلال واحتجوا بما ذكره الشيخ رحمه الله He says alone meaning he's isolated from the people whether he's isolated in regards to his place or isolated in that he is in his uh, sighting, meaning he's the only one who saw it. He says, for example, someone who uh, is isolated by place, if the people, uh, if he if he lives in an un- uninhabited place, a desert or wherever, he's living in somewhere which is uninhabited, and there's no one with him, and he sees the hilal. And he goes to the judge, However, the judge rejects his statement, either because he's he doesn't know his situation or because of whatever reason. But his testimony was rejected. Or, for example, someone who sees it alone in that the people gather to try to see the Hilal of Ramadan and no one sees it except him. And his testimony, and he says, I saw it, I saw it, and his testimony is rejected. فَيَلْزَمُهُ الصَّوْمُ And so he must fast due to the statement of Allah Ta'ala and whoever among you witnesses the month should fast. And due to the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fast due to seeing it and break your fast due to seeing it. And this man saw it and so it's an obligation on him to fast and everything which is attached to the month entering. Why? Because he saw it. This is the position of the Jumhur. The majority of the ulama say if he saw the Hilal of Ramadan alone and his testimony was rejected, should he just st- stick with the people and or should he just fast by himself? They say he should fast. They say he should fast. And some of their evidences is what the Shaykh mentioned. وَقَالَ بَعْضُ الْعُلَمَاء يقول وقال بعض العلماء لو رأى هلال رمضان وحده لم يلزمه الصوم بل يفطر مع الناس لا يصوم لأن الهلال ما هل واشتهر لا ما رؤية نعم هذه من حججهم وهذا القول هو اختيار من اختيار شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية رحمه الله وهو قول في المذهب في مذهب أحمد فقال شيخ الإسلام بل يصوم مع الناس ويفطر مع الناس يصوم مع الناس ويفطر مع الناس يقول شيخ الإسلام رحمه الله في مجموع الفتاوى قد تنازع الناس في الهلال هل هو اسم لما يطلع في السماء وإن لم يره أحد أو لا يسمى هلالا حتى يستهل به الناس ويعلموا انتهى كلامه رحمه الله فهذا من أسباب الخلاف في هذه المسألة هذا من أسباب الخلاف في هذه المسألة ما ذكره شيخ الإسلام والحنابلة والشافعية والحنفية والمالكية يقولون يصوم وحده he said, some of the ulama said, you see it? Some of the ulama said, if he sees the hilal of Ramadan alone, then he should, then it's not a must for him to fast. Rather, they say he should continue with the people. And the people are not going to be fasting, correct? Just as, Even though he... He saw it. Why? Because the hilal, this is the one of their uh, arguments, they said the hilal is that which is visible and prominent and known. Because Allah made these things timings for the people, the months. So the hilal is something which is, emerges and is, um, is known among the people. That's what the hilal is for and what it is. Not, what it, not something which is merely seen. Not that which is merely seen. Now, so this was one of their arguments. And this is the position of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah. 
where he opposed the four madahib. So Shaykh al-Islam says he should fast with the people and break his fast with the people, meaning the begin as it as it pertains to the beginning of the month and the end of the month. Fast with the people, break your fast with the people, even if you saw it. Shaykh al-Islam rahimahullah says in Majmu' al-Fatawa, he says the people have differed regarding al-Hilal. Is it a name for something which appears in the sky even though no one may see it? Or it's not called a Hilal until it emerges among the people and they know about it? Understood? So this is one of the reasons they differed in this issue. And the Hanabila, and the Shafi'iyya, and the Malikiyya, and the Hanafiyya, even though if there is an a opinion within the Madhab of Ahmad uh, that holds this position. Okay? The, what Shaykh al-Islam, Ibn Uta'in, the position of Shaykh al-Islam here. There is opinion within the Madhab. But the prominent position of the madhab is what uh, the previous opinion. So the Hanabil and the Shafi'i and the Hanafi and the Malikiyya say what? Fast by himself. Fast by himself because he saw it. So that's as it relates to what? Hilal of what? Ramadan. Hilal of? It's important. There's a difference between the two. Hilal of? Ramadan. وقوله أو رأى هلال شوال صام أي وجوبا ففرق المؤلف بين من انفرد برؤية هلال رمضان ورد قوله هنا لا ينبغي أن تكون فاصلة You see that? هلال رمضان there's a comma Scratch out that comma because it corrupts the meaning of what he's saying من انفرد برؤية هلال رمضان ورد قوله بأنه يصوم مع مفارقته الجماعة وبين من انفرد برؤية هلال شوال فإنه يصوم ولا يفطر برؤيته ووجه ذلك أن هلال شوال طب لماذا فرقوا بين هلال رمضان وهلال شوال قال ووجه ذلك أن هلال شوال لا يثبت شرعا إلا بشاهدين وهنا لم يشهد به إلا واحد فلا يكون داخلا شرعا فيلزمه الصوم مع أنه رآه يلزمه الصوم أي إذا رأى هلال ها شوال إذا رأى هلال شوال He says and his statement or sees the hilal of shawal fasts remember the statement of al-hajjawi Meaning as an obligation, obligatory to fast. And so you see that the author has differentiated between the one who sees the Hilal of Ramadan alone and his testimony is rejected in that he should that he should fast and between the one who sees the Hilal of Shawwal and so he should he so he should fast so he should fast that's what he's saying here and between one who sees the hilal of shawal meaning alone and so he should fast and should not break his fast due to seeing it why differentiate between the two ahsant because you need two witnesses to exit the month of Ramadan and establish the month of Shawwal. And here, if he saw it alone for Shawwal, then he should fast because that's only one witness. Notice that the author didn't say, and if he sees the Hilal of Shawwal and his testimony is rejected. He didn't say that. Why? Huh? No. Tayyip, you need two, okay. Why didn't he say, and his testimony is rejected for Shawwal? He said that about Ramadan, 
and his testimony is rejected. But he didn't say about Shawwal and his testimony is rejected. Huh? It doesn't matter. Because even if his testimony is accepted, he's still one person and you need you need two people. So it doesn't matter if his testimony is accepted or not. يقول وأما هلال رمضان فيثبت بشهادة واحد وقد شهد به فلزمه الصوم. As for the hilal of Ramadan, he says, then it is established due to the testimony of one person, and he has seen it, and so he should, and so he must fast. وقال بعض العلماء وقال بعض العلماء بل يجب عليه الفطر سرا. بل يجب عليه الفطر سرا أي إذا رأى هلال ها شوال وقال بعض العلماء بل يجب عليه الفطر سرا أي إذا رأى هلال شوال فالجمهور يقولون لا يفطر إذا رأى هلال شوال وحده الجمهور يقولون لا يفطر إذا رأى هلال شوال وحده بل يصوم مع الناس يقول الشيخ وقال بعض العلماء بل يجب عليه الفطر سرا لقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم صوموا لرؤيته وأفطروا لرؤيته وهذا الرجل قد رآه فيلزمه الفطر ولكن يكون سرا لألا يظهر مخالفة الجماعة وهذا قول الشافعية واختاره ابن حزم ما هو قولهم؟ يفطر سرا إذا رأى هلال شوال أما الجمهور فيقولون إذا رأى هلال شوال وحده فإنه يصوم فإنه يصوم مع الناس لا يفطر He says and some of the علماء say rather he should break his fast secretly he should break his fast secretly if he sees the hilal of what month Shawwal. If he sees the Hilal of Shawwal. So this is, so the position then of the majority of the ulama is that if he sees the Hilal of Shawwal alone, then he what? That he should fast. Continues his fast. He continues his fast. However, some of the ulama said, no, he should, he should break his fast secretly. Because he saw the Hilal break his fast secretly. Due to the statement of the Prophet ﷺ, fast due to seeing it and break your fast due to seeing it. And this person saw it and so he should break his fast. However, he should do it secretly so he does not oppose the jama'ah. And this is the position of the Shafi'iyya. This is the position of the Shafi'iyya and it is the position of Ibn Hazm, of the Zahiriyya. They say, break your fast secretly. Don't go, go against the people because you saw the hilal of what? Shawwal. يقول الشيخ واختار شيخ الإسلام رحمه الله في هاتين المسألتين أنه يتبع الناس فلو رأى وحده هلال رمضان لم يصم ولو رأى هلال شوال وحده لم يفطر لأن الهلال ما هل واستهل واشتهر لا ما رؤية and Shaykh al-Islam chose, rahimahullah, in these two issues, meaning seeing the Hilal of Shawwal, uh, Ramadan alone and seeing the Hilal of Shawwal alone. Shaykh al-Islam chose in these two issues that he follows the people. So if he sees the Hilal of Ramadan alone, should not fast. And if he sees the Hilal of Shawwal alone, he should not break his fast. Because the hilal is that which emerges and is manifest, is prominent, not something which is merely seen. يقول الشيخ والذي يظهر لي في مسألة الصوم في أول الشهر ما ذكره المؤلف أنه يصوم. وأما فهذا قول الشيخ رحمه الله بن عثيمين يقول والذي يظهر لي في مسألة الصوم في أول الشهر ما ذكره المؤلف أنه يصوم وأما في ما في مسألة الفطر فإنه لا يفطر أي يصوم إذن وهو ما ذكره المؤلف كذلك 
فيصوم في المسألتين فإنه لا يفطر تبعا للجماعة وهذا من باب الاحتياط فنكون قد احتطنا في الصوم والفطر ففي الصوم قلنا له صم وفي الفطر قلنا له لا تفطر بل صم He says and what is apparent to me who's saying this Ibn Uthaymin so Ibn Uthaymin is giving you his position on this issue he's saying and what is apparent to me is that as it relates to fasting in the beginning of the month is that he should fast as the author mentioned he should fast saw it alone fast as for the issue of breaking one's fast then he should not break his fast and so he should continue fasting and that is also the position of the author that's also the position of the author he said and follow the jama'a and this is considered precautionary so we would be taking the safer position in in both cases the sheikh is saying because if uh, as it relates to fasting we'll tell him fast and as it relates to breaking the fast we'll tell him don't break your fast rather you should continue fasting understood masala tabayyana mimma sabaqa anna dukhul ramadan yathbutu bi shahadati wahid ودليل ذلك حديث حديث ابن عمر رضي الله عنهما قال ترى الناس الهلال فأخبرت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أني رأيته فصام وأمر الناس بصيامه مسألة he said it becomes clear through that which has preceded that the month of Ramadan is not established that the month of Ramadan is established by the testimony of one person and the evidence for that is the hadith of ابن عمر he said the people looked for the Hilal and I told the Prophet ﷺ that I saw it and so he fasted and ordered the people to fast. وَهِلَالُ شَوَّالْ وَغَيْرُهُ مِنَ الشُّهُورِ لَا يَثْبُتُ إِلَّا بِشَاهِدَيْنِ لِقَوْلِ النَّبِيِّ صلى الله عليه وسلم فَإِنْ شَهِدَ شَاهِدَانِ فَصُومُوا وَأَفْطِرُوا وهذا قول الجمهور وهذا قول الجمهور وأن وهو أن هلال شوال لا يثبت إلا بشاهدين. He says as for the hilal of Shawwal and other months, then it is not established except by two witnesses, due to the statement of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. And if two witnesses bear witness, then fast and break your fast. This is the position of the Jumhur. The majority of the ulama say that Shawwal must be by two witnesses. This is the position of the majority. وَمِثْلُهُ دُخُولُ شَهْرِ ذِي الْحِجَّةِ لَا يَثْبُتُ إِلَّا بِشَاهِدَيْنِ فَلَوْ رَآهُ شَخْصٌ وحده لم يثبت دخول الشهر بشهادته وعلى هذا فإذا وقف رجل بعرفة في اليوم التاسع عنده الذي هو الثامن عند الناس فإن ذلك لا يجزئه لماذا؟ لأنه وقف في اليوم الثامن عند الناس ولو كان هو التاسع عنده وإذا وإن أراد أن يصوم اليوم التاسع عنده الذي هو عند الناس الثامن بنية أنه يوم عرفة فإن ذلك لا يجزئه عن صوم يوم عرفة ولو صام اليوم التاسع عند الناس الذي هو العاشر عنده هل يجوز أن يصومه؟ الجواب نعم يجوز أن يصوم لأنه وإن كان عنده حسب رؤيته العاشر فإنه عند الناس التاسع فلم يثبت شرعا فلم يثبت شرعا دخول شهر ذي الحجة بشهادة هذا الرجل وعلى هذا فإذا وقف في العاشر عنده وهو التاسع عند الناس أجزأه الوقوف أي وقف يوم عرفة he says, and similar to this is the month of Dhul Hijjah. It is not established except by two witnesses. 
And so if someone sees the Hilal of the Hijjah alone, and the month hasn't been established because of his testimony, the month hasn't been established, but he saw it. According then, according to this, then if he stands, if he stands at Arafah on the ninth day to him, what he considers the ninth day. However, it is the nine, it is the eighth day to the people. Then is that acceptable? No. Because the day of Arafah is on the ninth. So he'd be standing there by himself. He'd be there by himself and throwing a jamarat by himself and performing hajjah <laughs> by himself. That's he says, then that is uh, not sufficient, not acceptable. And if he f- wants to fast the ninth day to him, and it is the eighth day to the people, as an intention that it is the day of Arafah, then that is not acceptable as fasting the day of Arafah. And if he wants to fast the ninth day to the people, he wants to fast the ninth day as it is to the people. However, he considers it the tenth day. Is it permissible for him to fast? No, it's permissible. It's permissible. He says, the answer is, yes, it is permissible for him to fast. Because even though it is to him, according to his citing, the tenth, it is the ninth day to the people. And so the month hasn't been established. Shara'an. Shara'an. Let's just say the month hasn't been established, meaning the month of Dhul Hijjah, due to the testimony of this man. And according to this, if he stands, meaning at Arafah, on what he considers the tenth day, and it is the ninth day to the people, is it accepted? Yes, it is. Arafah, what day is Arafah? The ninth of Dhul Hijjah. So the people are standing and he's with them. وقول المؤلف يقول وقول المؤلف هنا ومن رأى وحده هلال رمضان ورد قوله ولم يقل في هلال شوال ورد قوله لأن هلال شوال لا يثبت برؤية واحد مطلقا حتى لو قبل وصدق أي لو قبلت شهادته في رؤية هلال شوال فإنه لا يثبت بها دخول شهر شوال لأن شهر شوال لا يثبت إلا بشهادة شاهدين قال حتى لو قبل وصدق بخلاف هلال رمضان He says and the statement of the author here and whoever sees uh, the hilal of Ramadan alone and his testimony is rejected the sheikh is saying and he didn't say and the hilal of shawwal his testimony is rejected why? I mentioned, I just mentioned this. Now, because the Hilal of Shawwal, he says, is only established by, the Hilal of Shawwal is not established by the sighting of one person, even if it is accepted. Even if it is accepted, as opposed to the Hilal of Ramadan. As opposed to the Hilal of Ramadan. So we're finished with that. Now we're going into the next topic and that is okay we've established ramadan now is entered who has to fast يقول الشيخ رحمه الله قوله ويلزم الصوم لكل مسلم مكلف قادر ويلزم الصوم لكل مسلم مكلف قادر الحجاوي رحمه الله says and fasting is a must for every Muslim who is responsible and able. And fasting is a must for every Muslim who is responsible and able. What do we... Mukallaf, we translated it as responsible. Who is the mukallaf? Ahsant and... Adolescent. Now, So when we say responsible person, every Muslim who is responsible and able... When we say responsible mukallaf, it means sane and adolescent. Two conditions. Sane and adolescent, that's a, someone who's re- considered responsible in Islam. 
he says this نعم قال هذا شروع في بيان شروط من يلزمه الصوم قوله لكل مسلم ألا مزائدة أي يلزم كل مسلم هذا هو الشرط الأول والإسلام ضده الكفر فالكافر لا يلزمه الصوم ولا يصح منه He says this is the first condition Muslim right he said who for every Muslim who is responsible and able. The first condition is that he is Muslim. And Islam, he says, the Islam, the opposite of it is Al-Kufr. And the Kafir, it is not a must that he fasts, nor is it correct. Nor is his fasting correct, even if he were. وَمَعْنَا قَوْلِنَا لَا يَلْزَمُهُ أننا لا نلزمه به حال كفره ولا بقضائه بعد إسلامه والدليل على ذلك قوله تعالى أي الدليل على أنه لا يصح منه قال والدليل على ذلك قوله تعالى وما منعهم أن تقبل منهم نفقاتهم إلا أنهم كفروا بالله وبرسوله ولا يأتون الصلاة إلا وهم كسالى ولا ينفقون إلا وهم كارهون فإذا كانت النفقات ونفعها متعد لا تقبل منها لكفرهم فالعبادات الخاصة من باب أولى He says and the meaning of our statement that it is that we do not uh, make him fast the kafir, what does that mean? That it's not a must for him to fast. He's saying we mean that we don't make him do it in his kufr. I mean, as long as he is a kafir, we don't force him to fast, nor do we order him to make it up if he were to become Muslim. Understood? Now, he doesn't have to make it up and also... We don't make it a must upon him as long as he is in that state of kufr. He says, and the statement, and he means the statement that his fasting is not accepted, and the evi- Afwan, and his and the evidence, I said statement. Naam, and the evidence, and he's referring meaning the evidence that his fasting is not accepted, and the evidence is Qawluhu Ta'ala. And nothing prevents their nafaqat, their contributions from being accepted from them except that they disbelieved in Allah and His Messenger. And they come not to a salah except in a lazy state and that they do not spend except while they are unwilling. He says, and so if a nafaqat and nafaqat uh, contribute charities if their charities are not accepted even though it extends to other people if that's not accepted due to their kufr then individual forms of worship are even more so wa kawnuhu la yaqdi idha aslam daliluhu qawluhu ta'ala qul lil ladhina kafaru iyantahu yughfar lahum ma qad salaf وثبت عن طريق التواتر عن الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه كان لا يأمر من أسلم بقضاء ما فاته من الواجبات As for the issue of him making up his fasts What's the evidence that he does not have to make it up? Huh? He says And the evidence for it is قوله تعالى قل للذين كفروا إن ينتهوا يغفر لهم ما قد سلف Say to those who have disbelieved if they cease their past will be forgiven if they cease their past will be forgiven and it's established by way of tawatur that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he didn't used to tell the people who became muslim you have to make up all the obligations that you missed how many people entered into islam he didn't you have to make up all the obligations and you missed this many years of ramadan you have to make it up so he doesn't make it up if he uh, if he becomes a Muslim. ولكن هل يعاقب على تركها في الآخرة إذا لم يسلم؟ 
هل يعاقب على تركها في الآخرة إذا لم يسلم؟ However, is he punished for not doing it in the آخرة if he does not become a Muslim? Is he punished in the Akhirah for not doing it? Not doing the obligations. If he does not become a Muslim. Dies on his kufr. Does he, is he punished for leaving a salah and zakah? And, and dies on kufr. For, because he didn't fast? One second. Tfadda. Yeah, why? What's what's your reasoning? No, we. I mean, we know that. But what? What's the? Yeah, he didn't give zakah. Is he punished for not giving zakah? Died on his kufr. We know he's in the fire. But is he punished for that? Punished? Okay. What's the reasoning? So the if a believer doesn't do it, is he punished? So a believer would be punished, and the kafir isn't. So the kafir is in a better situation than the believer in that regard. Right? Am I right? No? Let's read. يقول الجواب The answer نعم يعاقب على تركها في الآخرة وعلى ترك جميع واجبات الدين لأنه إذا كان المسلم المطيع إذا كان المسلم المطيع لله الملتزم بشرعه قد يعاقب عليها فالمستكبر من باب أولى وإذا كان الكافر يعذب على ما يتمتع به من نعم الله من طعام وشراب ولباس ففعل المحرمات وترك الواجبات من باب أولى أي يشير الشيخ رحمه الله إلى قول الله تعالى قل من حرم زينة الله التي أخرج لعباده والطيبات من الرزق قل هي للذين آمنوا في الحياة الدنيا خالصة يوم القيامة قل هي للذين آمنوا في الحياة الدنيا خالصة يوم القيامة فمفهوم الآية قل هي للذين آمنوا مفهومها مفهوم الآية أنها غير مباحة للذين لم يؤمنوا فهذا مراد الشيخ بآخر جملة He says the answer نعم He is punished for leaving it off in the آخرة for not doing those obligations and also for all of the obligations of the deen. Because if a Muslim who is obedient to Allah and abides by the legislation, his shawr, he may be punished for it, then the arrogant one, meaning who doesn't abide by the legislation, doesn't consider the legislation binding, then that's even more so. And if a kafir is punished for what he enjoys of the ni'am of Allah, of food and drink and clothing, if he's punished for that, then doing the things which are haram and leaving the things which are an obligation is even more so. What the shaykh means when he says that even the kafir is punished for what he enjoys of, food and drink and clothing, he's referring to the statement of Allah Ta'ala, say who has forbidden the adornment of Allah which he has produced for his servants and the good things of provision, say they are those, say they are for those who believe in the dunya exclusively for them on the day of resurrection. Say they are for those who believe. So what do you understand from the ayah, from this part? It's inferred that it's not mubah for those who don't believe. Those things, provisions and so on, is not mubah for those who don't believe. This is what the shaykh is referring to in that final uh, sentence. وَالدَّلِيلُ مَا ذَكَرَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَنْ أَصْحَابِ الْيَمِينَ أَنَّهُمْ يَقُولُونَ لِلْمُجْرِمِينَ مَا سَلَكَكُمْ فِي سَقَرْ قَالُوا لَمْ نَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ وَلَمْ نَكُمْ نُطْعِمُ الْمِسْكِينَ وَكُنَّا نَخُوضُ مَعَ الْخَائِضِينَ وَكُنَّا نُكَذِّبُ بِيَوْمِ الدِّينَ فَذَكَرُوا أَرْبَعَةَ أَسْبَابٍ مِنْهَا تَرْكُ وَاجِبَاتٍ He says, and the evidence is what Allah Ta'ala mentioned about the people of the right hand and that they say to the criminals while they are being punished, they say, 
ما سلككم في سقر What has caused you to enter سقر One of the names of hell They say We were not of those who used to pray And nor did we used to feed the poor And we used to delve with those who delved, meaning delving into false talk, false discourse. And we used to deny the day of recompense. And the Sheikh says, and so they mentioned four things. Of them is abandoning obligations. Abandoning the wajibat. يقول فإن قال قائل تكذيبهم بيوم الدين كفر وهو الذي أدخلهم سقر فالجواب أنهم ذكروا أربعة أسباب ولولا أن لهذه المذكورات مع تكذيبهم بيوم الدين أثرا في إدخالهم, إدخالهم النار لم يكن في ذكرها فائدة لم يكن في ذكرها فائدة ولو أنهم لم يعاقبوا عليها ما جرت على بالهم فالسبب الأول لم نكن من المصلين الصلاة والثاني ولم نكن نطعم المسكين الزكاة والثالث وكنا نخوض مع الخائضين مثل الاستهزاء بآيات الله والرابع وكنا نكذب بيوم الدين وهو كفر He says نعم If someone says If someone says That Their denial of the day of recompense, as is mentioned in the ayah, their denial of the day of recompense is kufr. And that is what made them enter saqa. Okay? He says the answer is that they mentioned four causes. And if these four things, which include their denial of the day of recompense, if and if these four things had no effect then there would be no benefit in mentioning them. Right? And if they weren't being punished for it, it would not have crossed their minds, meaning those things. So the first cause, meaning that they mention, لَمْ نَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ الصَّلَاةِ وَلَمْ نَكُمْ نُطْعِمُ الْمِسْكِينَ The second, الزَّكَاةِ The third, وَكُنَّا نَخُوضُ مَعَ الْخَائِضِينَ He says, for example, mocking the ayat of Allah. والرابع, and we used to deny the day of recompense. So if those things had no effect, they wouldn't have mentioned them. But they were asked, what caused you to enter Saqar? Uh,